All righty. Um, excited to get back, uh, you know, for our home opener. I thought I was really proud of our team going on the road and getting a win, but, um, you know, huge challenge. Um, doesn't need to be said about the San Francisco 49ers coming in to U.S. Bank Stadium, and uh, we want to obviously take advantage of the enthusiasm we hope to get and we know we'll get from our fans. Expect that place to be an awesome environment on uh, on Sunday, uh, and we've got to put in the work this week to play a really good football team. Um, as far as uh, participation, um, really the only injury uh, that, you know, as of right now, he's going to stay in and get some treatment, taking it a day at a time with Jordan Addison, uh, but everybody else should uh, participate in some fashion today, and uh, we'll put out our injury report later on today. But with that, I'll open it up to you guys. Kevin, when it comes to uh, Andrew Van Ginkle, before he got here, did, did you have a sense for all the different things that he could do uh, just from his time in Miami and uh, Brian Flores? Had, had yeah, that was uh, honestly as we identified some potential targets in free agency. He was one of the first names uh, that I had identified even before talking to Flo. And then, you know, the first chance that Flo and I got together to, to really talk through some of our options, um, that was one of the first names he mentioned to me. Uh, for On my end of it, it was really just playing against the guy, uh, watching crossover tape where you just see a bunch of plays get made by the same guy, and they're not always the same play. You know, they're not always just doing his job on the edge in the run game or pressuring the quarterback. He's dropping into coverage. He's matching players in coverage. He's making plays on the ball. He's punching the ball out, you know, when he arrives to tackle. Uh, just does so many things. And then just being an extension of flow out there, as many of those guys as we can have, and we have a lot of them, especially, you know, in that first group, whatever grouping that we're in, that just allows kind of that player ownership to come to life because they understand the why. And, you know, Gink always knows really the intent behind his job on the play. And then that allows them to kind of take a look at what formation we're getting, what are the, you know, what are the tendencies, what are the things we may get, and then react, like picking off a screen like that. That's really hard to do. And then just to have the ability to catch that football. I mean, I could probably give some of you guys 100 chances at that same catch. And uh, I can tell you you're probably not in the end zone with half our defensive staff at the end of that play. How quick is that, too? Uh, just from a hand-eye coordination yeah, that's... standpoint, because he's he did you know he picked off Sam the same way here at, at your night scrimmage. Yeah. So it's not like a fluke. No, no, that's it wasn't. And even when we when we called that play in the night scrimmage, I remember you know kind of saying over to Wes, you know, could we have gotten it the other way? Um, you know, just because of knowing that he's made those plays before and hopefully it's not the last time I expect people to have an awareness of him especially when he's standing up on the edge um, you know or potentially walked uh, it's just so aware that you have to make sure your timing execution and then the urgency to place the football away from him might cause you to be inaccurate you know which is the number one thing that offenses are looking for on those bubble screens and kind of quick element throws so whether he gets his hands on it or not he's still going to have an effect just by his presence right there on a play like that is is his technique changing so that he can rush from an angle that allows him to do that or is that him saying hey i see something here i'm gonna kind of do this on my own well i i think they're coaching you know offset gun run or what is our defensive formation are we in a threatening position where uh, teams may look to use that as kind of a bailout type throw uh, to not have to handle whatever the interior looks like from a pressure or front structure standpoint. And then he just knows the first, you know, he, uh, you know, if you would have just had a handoff on the play, you would have seen him probably attached to that C gap and, and do his job setting the edge and playing the run and all those things. So that's the you can't really just say, if he was just a guy that, okay, hey, Gink, it wasn't thrown, you got to go. If he was that player, you couldn't do as much with him. But since he diagnoses and, and recognizes what he's going to get, he can. It, you wouldn't know the difference between the calls based upon how they played out. Where do you feel like uh, Christian Derrissa has, has improved the most since you've been here? Yeah, I just, I've felt such a, you know, such an urgency from him just to uh, attempt to be one of the best at the position. Uh, he already has really established himself, but it's really what I've really challenged him to do is every rep, every day, you know, and no matter what your matchup is in the game, whether you're lining up against 97 or Burns or, or, or Thibodeau last week, like whoever that player is, you got to treat it 
like your job in many cases were probably by scheme asking you to do a significant job. So the more you can consistently be Christian Derisaw every single snap, uh, which he has basically been the majority of my time here. Um, and I've just seen him really have a laser focus to do that daily since we really kind of came back to camp. And uh, it's awesome to see when you see a guy get rewarded as he should have with the, with the contract and then be, you know, the same guy every single day. It, you know, it makes you feel good as the head coach. Hey, man, give it as the, of all the runs that you called on Sunday, was there, was there one that stands out that you were most confident in because you had Aaron Jones who could do what you maybe called or maybe what you didn't? Yeah, um, it's a good question. I think you saw Aaron have some explosive runs on some more tighter hitting kind of runs where he played the cutback really well. Uh, you saw him bounce, uh, you know, the play down by the goal line. Um, and really, you know, that play was packaged with multiple other plays. So the intent of actually running that run as opposed to some others down there was really kind of centered around the look that we got. Um, and then just some of the wider hitting stuff that he was able to get outside, you know, that run late in the game where, you know, we had uh, basically ran an open side zone play where he hit it and just showed his burst and speed. Um, so really not really in one, any one particular. I, I just think you saw a guy that he's, he's pretty darn explosive with that burst and then he's got great feel and vision. And then what I loved is some of those longer runs. There wasn't a you know, he had no desire to go out of bounds on really any of those runs. There was a burst late to get every possible yard he could on those runs and uh, just loved everything about his personal play style in the game. Flo used the word violent like four times yesterday talking about the 49ers. Just how much does that show up on tape as you guys are, are preparing? Both sides of the ball, special teams, um, whether they're running it, throwing it, whether they're blitzing or rushing four, playing coverage, I mean, they, they just play so hard. Um, and, you know, this is the team I think of when you talk about play style, uh, not necessarily being about X's and O's. Uh, they, it, no matter what side of the ball you're defending or, or playing offense against, they don't particularly care too much if you know what's coming. And I think that's uh, what's a really powerful thing about their the way Kyle runs their, their program there is, is in a lot of ways you know what's coming and can you stop it. And, uh, you know, you just got to give them so much credit for not only what they've built there, but as they've kind of reloaded their roster and, and capitalized on Brock, you know, being a young player and really putting a great group around him on offense and then having those pillars, you know, really at every level of their defense with, you know, Bosa and, and the great interior players they have. Obviously, Fred's the best inside linebacker in the NFL, and then I think Ward is – is one of the best corners in the NFL. So they've really established themselves. And when they get, you know, Hafanga back as well, which could be this week, you really start seeing the layers to that defense. So it's, it's personnel, it's play style, and then it's the scheme that they run that they're so well coached at, at uh, playing so hard within um, that gives you a lot of challenges on game day. Well, we talked a little bit yesterday about some of the check system. You, I know you talked with him about him wanting to have the pen last. I guess from an offensive perspective, how does a, a defense that can check like his does stress an offense or change the, the map? Yeah, I mean, at any point in time, um, you could get a variety of different checks from those players of what they're seeing and feeling. How has Flo put together the defense that week? Um, how are things packaged? It's very similar to kind of how we play offense, which is why I was so drawn to the idea of, of getting – flow to not only be our defensive coordinator, but, you know, the way he allows me to, you know, the conversations we have, it helps me, uh, you know, be a better, be a better offensive coordinator because I'm, you know, infusing, you know, the perspective of what they're, you know, what it's going to feel like from the other side um, when we get into the game. And uh, I, some, some of my favorite conversations of the week are always when Flo and I sit down and talk about kind of the plan of attack and what it's going to take to win the game. What was your approach to camp? driven by games like this? I mean, you can't go two-a-days now and stuff like that, but this was definitely, as you talked about, you yeah. know, an attempt to be a pads more blah, blah, blah. Was this driven by, like, the San Franciscos at having, and being a tougher team physically up front and, you know, conversely elsewhere? Yeah, I mean, everything was really, I really challenged our guys to focus in on, you know, that, that first game and, and really get in the habit of, you know, what the weekly protocol has to be for us to have the discipline every single day, every walkthrough, 
every practice to maximize what we get out of it. Uh, but you can very easily attach, you know, that play style term that I used a lot with you guys and our team every single day, highlighting examples of it, showing them what it looks like uh, from our guys and, and just hoping that uh, they, it's ingrained in the fabric of who we are, that it's not something that I've got to give some impassioned speech about every single week. It's more so now it's not establishing it. Can you maintain it regardless of who your opponent is? And it just so happens that our opponent this week and, and many of our early season opponents really hang their hat on that play style and physicality. And you've got to be able to match it and you've got to try to match it early. Um, and not let them capture the momentum of the football game. I mean, these guys this week, if, if we do that, you could see 40-plus runs out of Kyle in this group. Um, and it, it just becomes a, you know, a really hard game and a team to capture momentum back against. Um, that's why I was so happy last year with how the defense was able to respond to our early turnover with a turnover of, of their own. And then we were able to take that down and get seven points and kind of reset the game a little bit. But that all takes players being mentally tough to be able to overcome that early adversity. And, and we got a, an immediate dose of it the other day, which we've got to find a way to avoid and, and not have a part of our program. Yeah, I, I'm glad you asked. I, you know, Harrison's was one of the first guys that we brought here via free agency when uh, Kwesi and I got together here. And um, there was a lot to really like about Harrison from afar. And then when we brought him in, you really started to see even more from a leadership standpoint. Uh, he's consistent every single day. Uh, his teammates voted him a captain his first time in his career. He was the man of the year last year. And although it always tends to circle back to what you do in between the white lines, which Harrison has been really rock solid uh, for us and really played a ton of snaps for us, um, it's also those other things that as a coach, I can rest easy knowing Harrison's going to be here for you know much longer than just this year. And I always like when we, you know, we do reward our own. And we've done that a few times um, you know, throughout the spring and, and training camp. And now right you know, as we're going into the season, coming out of the season, um, I just love it. Every time I, I know it's getting close, I get excited and, and you know, do whatever I can to help get it over the finish line. But in the end, it's a, a big hug and a smile for me saying I'm, I'm very fortunate to have this job in the first place. But to have this job with players like Harrison Phillips um, gives me you know, a ton of joy. Uh, Sam being in San Francisco last year, does that mean anything for you guys this week with his kind of knowledge of their schemes on both sides? I think it, it definitely helps with his own preparation because he's very much aware of what they're all about from a, you know what he's going to be, you know the incredible challenge it's going to be like it is for every quarterback that plays against them every single week. Um, so he's definitely aware of that. And then for the most part, you know, I think you know, the days of uh, you know, you feel like at any one point in time in the season, there's going to be some guys from your roster on some other teams. And at what point does that player have an unbelievable impact on the game plan? Um, you know, unless a bunch of them are going to end up being coaches like me, um, probably not often. Uh, but Sam's a really bright guy, and, and uh, whatever we can get from him to help us as coaches game plan, we're going to try to do, but also make sure we're very sensitive to his own process that he's established that I've been challenging him to do since really we started training camp, that he's laser focused on that.